Hello, have you ever heard about Bruton's X-linked A-gamma globulinemia? This may sound very complicated, but in fact, this is an immune system disorder. And here you see a mind map, which is covering most of the immune system disorders. We have six main branches, one of them branch being immunodeficiency. And we will talk about this since our Bruton X-linked A-gamma globulinemia is part of a primary immunodeficiency. So if we define immunodeficiency, we will see that it's a quantitative or qualitative defect of some cells like lymphocytes, T and B lymphocytes, or phagocytic cells, or the complement mediated system. And the quantitative standing for that, we have a reduced number of these cells, or a qualitative defect, meaning that we have the function of these cells are bad. And then the patients will now be susceptible to infection, to lymphoproliferative diseases, for example. The types of the immunodeficiency is primary or secondary. Secondary being an acquired deficiency, primary being a genetic deficiency. So this is the difference between them. So acquired one are caused by, for example, cancer, irradiation, malnutrition, and so on. And one example being acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS. Primary one have early onset between six months and two years. So these are babies with recurrent infections. And there are different types of primary. We have those with B cell defect, those with T cell defect, those with other types of defects, like in the complement system. And if you look at this mind map, you see that the Bruton X-linked agamoglobulinemia is part of the B cell defect. So if you turn to this mind map now, this will give you all the information you have to know about Bruton's X-linked agamoglobinemia. And you see here, here we have a name and we have to understand the name. So X-linked standing for that we have a mutation of X chromosome. If you have a mutation in the X chromosome, then the Bruton tyrosine kinase will not work as it should. And if this doesn't work, then the B cell maturation will be stopped. And if you stop B cell maturation, then you don't have any plasma cells and you don't have any immunoglobulins then, since plasma cells are important for producing immunoglobulin. So now we can understand the name. We have an X chromosome mutation, which gives rise to Bruton tyrosine kinase mutation, uh, to uh, Bruton tyrosine kinase not functioning as it should. And then there will not be any gamma globulins in the blood because gamma globulins are immunoglobulins. So if you turn to this now, X chromosome Q21.3, what does this mean? We have a mutation in the X chromosome, but more specifically, we, we have a mutation in the long arm of the X chromosome because you see we have a long arm and we have a short arm. The short arm being abbreviated as a P, the long arm abbreviated as a Q. So here we have a mutation in the long arm between, you see here, we have a region 21 and band three of the region 21. And there we get this name. And the mutation is not here, it's between this and region 22. So there we have a mutation between region 21 and region 22. Okay. And as we said, that will be causing that the Bruton tyrosine kinase is not working. So we will stop the maturation step here. So first of all, in the bone marrow, you see we have a pluripotent stem cell, which would give rise to myeloid stem cell or common lymphoid progenitor cells. And this cell can now give rise to B cell or T cell. So the B cell, this pro B cell, then becomes pre B cell. And the pre B cell then becomes immature B cell and mature B cell and then plasma cell. So these are the normal sequence. But as you see here, we blocked the maturation stop here. So we have a lot of pre B cell, but we don't have any other cells here. And if you don't have any plasma cells, then you don't have any immunoglobulins. So this is happening in the peripheral. This should be happening in the peripheral side. So 
we now know that we stopped the maturation at the pre-B cell stage. We have absent B cells. We have absent plasma cells. We have absence of all immunoglobulins. So these ones are A, M, G, E, D. And that meaning that in the germinal centers where you usually have B cells, and you can imagine that these germinal centers will be underdeveloped since we don't have any B cells. And these are the common places like tonsils, appendix, the Peyer's patches and lymph nodes. Here we have the germinal centers. And the T cells are normal in number, so they will try to compensate for the defect in the B cell. So they will try to handle the infection by themselves. And if you look at in the lab, if you look in the lab, you will see that the pre B cells will be having this CD19 marker, which is typical for B lymphocytes. And this is a marker on the B lymphocyte. And you will see that the light chains, the immunoglobulin light chains are not there. So we know that we have some problem with the maturation step and especially with the Bruton tyrosine kinase in this case. And therefore we don't have this light chains. The receptor is not uh, produced as it should be. So lymph node, Paris patches, appendix. W what is lymph node you see here? These are the lymphatic system. And the small, small dots here, which is filtering the lymph. These are the lymph nodes. And this is a bigger picture of it, you see. And in the lymph node, you have a place called germinal centers. And as we said, the B cells are usually here. But in our case, they will not be here. So this will be underdeveloped. The Peyer's patches here, you see, this is the intestine. And this is the lumen of the intestine, the villi, and so on. And here we have the Peyer's patches. And this lighter color is the germinal center. It's a lighter color. And here we should have our B cells, but this would be underdeveloped in our case. And in the appendix, we have also these germinal centers and in the tonsils too. But all these places will be underdeveloped. Okay, if we turn now to the clinical part, we have a Familial disease, so meaning genetic, it's inherited, mostly affecting male infants and affecting them after about six months of age. Why? Because then the, the immunoglobulins from the mother are depleted from the baby. So the baby is not producing immunoglobulins for himself and the mother's immunoglobulins are depleted. So we will see symptoms after about six months of age. But there are some cases, about 10% of cases will reach teenage years. And uh, some other disease called common variable immunodeficiency uh, have 10% of these will have also this X-linked agama globulinemia. And in the lab, we can use different methods to, to measure B cells or the immunoglobulins. Here you see we have written quantitative nephilometer and it's measuring the total amount of immunoglobulins in your blood. Immunoelectrophoresis is measuring the specific subclasses of these and flow cytometer is measuring the B lymphocytes, the cells. So we take some blood from the patient. We take this blood and put it into this uh, nephilometer. You see this is a laser beam. And the laser beam is going through this solution normally if there is no, not normally, sorry. It's going through if you don't have anything in the solution. But you should have immunoglobulins, particles in the solution. And if you have particles, then the light will be scattered in this bottle. And then the sphere is also uh, scattering the light even further so that it can reach a photodetector. And the photodetector is then uh, co uh, connected to a computer, which can then analyze the result. But imagine now that we don't have any immunoglobulins. So we don't have any particles in the solution. So we are not scattering the light. The light is going through, meaning the photodetector is detecting, detecting nothing. So this is in our gamma globulinemia, no immunoglobulins in the blood. So here is uh, 
typical flow cytometer. It's a simple representation. We have a laser beam. The cells are dropping down here, as you see, and the laser beam is hitting the cell, and then the light is scattered. And that can be measured also. And we have stained the cells. The, the importance here is that we can, uh, for example, deflect the cells here. So we can sort B cells or T cells and so on. We can sort the cells into that cell which we want to measure or we want to investigate. Uh, and electrophoresis being that we have a gel and the electric charge, and this is traveling accordingly to the either size or charge and so on. There are different types of electrophoresis. And here we are concerned with gamma globulins, which are our immunoglobulins. And as you see here, the gamma globulins are higher here than here. So the level of the gamma globulins is very low here. And we can see that with electrophoresis too, you see this is bluish. And here we don't have this bluish color. We don't have any gamma globulins. So these should be the particles, immunoglobulins, the gamma globulins. And clinically more, when we're talking about the diseases, we can see that we have infections, we can see autoimmune diseases even, and unfortunately death also. So in the past, the death rate was quite high for these patients, especially in the infancy or early childhood. And, but nowadays, most of the patients will reach child, uh, adulthood, uh, which is a great improvement uh, due to therapy. And autoimmune diseases, 35% of the patients are approximately, you know, statistics are never true. So approximately one third of the patients will have some autoimmune diseases, arthritis or dermatomyositis. So if we turn to the infections, we can have bacterial infections, we can have viral infection, we can have uh, parasite infection, intestinal protozoan, for example and so on. So let's turn to the bacterial infections. These are all the bacterial infections which can happen in these patients. Pharyngitis, for example, you see there's uh, infection of the pharynx. Uh, sinusitis, you see here we have our paranasal sinuses. You can have infect, uh, infection in, in these. You can have otitis media, meaning in the middle, middle ear cavity, you have an infection with pus. The eardrum is bulging out and it's infected and the eustachian's tube can be swollen when, and blocking uh, the eustachian tube. So these are the things which we can see. Bronchitis also, here we have the lung, the, bron uh, the trachea, the bronchus and so on. And you see here this fluid, which is uh, mucus. So it's a kind of mucus plug. Uh, pneumonia, here we should see normal alveoli. And here we have alveola filled with infection and with mucus and pyoderma septicemia and meningitis being some other types of bacterial infection pyoderma you see this is a foot with some reddish uh, uh, color meaning that we have blood edema yellowish so we have pus so it's bacterial infection uh, and this this is very awful uh, you can Google it or you can find many, many more pictures about these things. Septicemia, you have a lot of blood filled under the skin. So this is um, a systemic, uh, very fatal systemic disease. Uh, meningitis, you see here we have the brain, normal brain. And the color here you see is more yellowish, uh, orange, uh, reddish, meaning that we have pus filled here with blood also. So these are the things which we can see, unfortunately. Uh, the viral infection being, for example, hepatitis. So uh, this is a liver with three kinds of diseases represented. We have cirrhosis in the middle and cancer and cirrhosis here. You see this cancer uh, filled liver. But our hepatitis here is that we see that the liver is folded. Not so much as in cirrhosis, but it's folded anyway. Uh, what we more can see is enteroviruses, like echovirus, polyvirus, and Coxsackie virus, and so on. They infect the gastrointestinal tract first, and then they go to the nervous system and infect the nervous system. And here you can see, for example, we have encephalitis, or we can even have paralytic poliomyelitis. 
so there's a risk of all these diseases and these are different locations of the brain which can be affected as you see here uh, polymyelitis is affecting here uh, the spinal cord for example and as we said we have a parasite infection to Giardia lamblia uh, which is normally attacked by the immunoglobulin A but we don't have any immunoglobulin so then this will keep infecting the body so it's a persistent infections all the time what we more can mention which we forgot to mention is that the bacterial infection the usual causative organisms can be hemophilus influenza or streptococcus pneumonia or staphylococcus aureus and um, usually these are opsonized by antibodies but we don't have any antibodies we don't have any immunoglobulins uh, so we don't opsonize these bacteria and then uh, these are not cleared by the phagocytic cells. So this is a problem. The treatment is replacement therapy. So you, repre you replace immunoglobulins uh, to the patients. So you, you give them intravenously. Uh, antibiotics, of course, for the infections and genetic counseling before you have a child, since this is an inherited disease. Uh, so if we want to summarize now, we can say that Bruton's X-linked digamaglobulinemia is a mutation in the X chromosome in the long arm Q21 region and uh, third, uh, uh, third subregion, and then between this and the uh, 22nd region of the X chromosome. And that is doing that the Bruton tyrosine kinase will not be working as it should, so we will have a maturation stop between pre B cell and immature B cell, meaning that we don't have any of these cells. We don't have any plasma or immunoglobulins. So that will uh, give rise to, as we said, plasma cell absence, immunoglobulins absence. And then of course, the germinal centers will be in the microscope. They will be underdeveloped uh, these are the places, for example, for them. The T cells are normal. They handle the infections quite well. Uh, we can see that on pre B cells, we have normal CD90 marker, but we have abnormal immunoglobulin light chains on them. Uh, the clinical, we said that it's familial, male infants after six months of age, it's appearing. Some patients reach uh, teenage years, and common variable immunodeficiency patients can also represent. Uh, can present with this uh, Bruton's excellent agamoglobinemia. In the lab, you can use flow cytometer or immunoelectrophoresis. You can use this nephilometer to measure the amount of immunoglobulins. Uh, what we forgot to mention is that uh, these are approximately the levels in the body. So IgA, if you have lower than 100 milligram per deciliter, then you have a deficiency in this. So you can expect that we will have a deficiency in all these immunoglobulins. Uh, diseases, we said that we have bacterial infections, viral infection or parasitic infections. We have autoimmune diseases or even death. Nowadays, uh, as we said, due to therapy, we have a better likelihood of uh, reaching adulthood. And these are the different types of infections, as, as we said. Uh, some of the causes being hemophilus influenza, streptococcus pneumonia, staphylococcus aureus, and so on. And uh, that's it. We have our treatment, replacement therapy, antibiotics, and genetic counseling. That's what you can do for these patients. And the big picture will be that, as we said, that this is a B cell defect. It's a classified as a B cell defect in the primary immunodeficiency branch. And these are the main branches so this was one of them and this is the whole immune system and thank you very much for listening